I worked at a restaurant when I was in high school, and for a while after. It was my first job, and I did it for around 5 years in total. This story happened when I was around 18 years old, not long after I finished high school. The restaurant was a popular spot for locals and tourists alike. It had a cozy, dimly lit atmosphere, and it served some pretty decent food. I still enjoyed it after all those years. I started as a dishwasher, but I was a server at the time of this incident. My shift started at 5pm and went all the way until midnight. I lived across town, so I would take the city bus to and from work. It was a bit of a hassle, but it was better than having to walk home at night. Jeff was one of the other servers. He was a bit gruff, but he was always willing to help out when I needed it. He was older than me, probably at least 35, and he took kind of a mentor role to me, even though I had been working there longer. One evening at around 10pm, a customer started causing commotion. He was yelling and cursing at Jeff. I don't know what it was all about, but I figured the guy was just drunk. My guess would have been that Jeff tried to cut him off, and he threw a fit but I still don't know for sure. He continued to berate Jeff and the other staff members. Eventually, the manager intervened and asked the customer to leave. He stumbled out of the restaurant, still muttering under his breath. We all thought it was just a typical drunk customer and didn't think much of it. Things like that would happen around once per week. We continued with our work and began closing up for the night when the time came. The last customers left at around 11pm, but it took us a while to clean up and restock for the night. By the time we were finished, it was nearly midnight. The only people left in the restaurant were me and Lily, the assistant manager. Jeff's shift ended a little earlier. Lily was responsible for locking up, and she would finish up the paperwork while I was cleaning. Once we were done, Lily and I left the restaurant and she drove off. As I was walking out of the parking lot towards the bus stop, I noticed that same customer from before standing by himself on the sidewalk. He looked angry and he started to walk towards me. He approached me and started asking me strange questions about the other staff members. He wanted to know when they were working and even asked if they lived alone. I felt uncomfortable and tried to brush him off, but he wouldn't leave me alone. He then began to rant about how horrible everyone was at the restaurant. He said we didn't treat him right and that he was going to come back and mess everyone up. As I walked away, the man continued to follow me. I could hear him muttering and I knew that I needed to get away from him. I sped up and finally made it to the bus stop. I turned around and saw him still following me. I was about to call out for help when the bus pulled up. I jumped on and watched the man finally give up and walk away. When my stop came, I got off. I looked back to make sure he wasn't still following me. I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw he wasn't there. I walked home quickly, constantly checking over my shoulder to make sure I wasn't being followed. A few weeks went by, and everything seemed to be back to normal. Then one day when I was off, I got a call from one of my coworkers. She told me that there had been an incident at the restaurant. Apparently the guy who had followed me that night came back and threatened everyone with a gun. Luckily nobody was hurt. The guy just came in drunk waving around a gun. They didn't know whether or not it was loaded, or if it was even real, but still. The police were called, and they were able to catch the guy pretty quickly. They figured that he was angry about being kicked out the other time. I did an interview with the police and told them pretty much what I said in this story. I told them that he followed me and asked me some weird questions. I think all that factored into his charges. I guess it showed that he was planning the attack. I think that makes it a more serious crime legally. I'm not a legal expert or anything. That's just what I've heard. I've been a police officer for eight years. When I was a rookie, I did the night shift often. It was almost always painfully boring because there was not much crime in my city. That has changed since then, but that's another story. Things were really uneventful at the time. It was a quiet night on the streets of the downtown area. I was patrolling the city, keeping an eye out for any suspicious activity, but not expecting much. I was driving down one of the smaller streets 
which was technically part of the college. It was a student area of the city, and it was also right in the downtown core. It was around 3 a.m., and everything was closed. The streets were deserted, and all the businesses were shut for the night. The only light came from the street lamps, and from my headlights. I turned onto a larger street which was filled with pubs and restaurants that were popular spots for the students. Eventually I noticed one of the restaurants that looked like it had a faint light on. I couldn't help but wonder why it would be open at such a late hour, especially when everything else in the area was closed. I knew that something was wrong, because everything had to be closed by 2am, so there was no way it was open. This place was the only one with a light on. I figured it could have been left on by accident when the staff closed the place. I decided to check it out anyway, just to be thorough. I pulled over and parked my car on the street, and then I got out. I walked to the front door of the restaurant, and noticed that it was open slightly. It was unlocked, and not quite latched. I pushed the door open, and called out to see if anybody was inside. When no one responded, I decided to call for backup before entering. I called my sergeant and asked for another unit at the location. Next I made my way into the pub and called out again, but still no one answered. I could see that the lights were on in the back where I figured the kitchen probably was. I slowly made my way towards the light. As I entered the kitchen area, I saw that the lights were indeed on, but there was nobody there. It was eerily quiet. One of the fluorescent lights was flickering, adding to the creepiness of the situation. I walked around the kitchen for a minute, and I noticed a small pool of blood on the floor. I drew my gun, fearing that there might be someone hiding nearby. I continued to call out, but now I was actually hoping that no one would answer, and I got my wish. There was nothing but silence. It wasn't long after that that my backup arrived. We secured the scene and searched the entire pub, but there was nothing there. We couldn't find any additional evidence of what happened or who the blood belonged to. The incident was thoroughly investigated, but we never found out what happened that night. It was a mystery that still haunted me years later. There were no missing people reported in the area at the time, and there were no reports of assault around that time either. The restaurant was located near the local college, which made me wonder if a student had been involved. However, without any leads, it's impossible to say for sure. Over time, the restaurant continued to be a popular spot for students who would often gather there for a drink or a bite to eat. It was a strange feeling to know that something so terrifying had happened in that same place. Years later, as I patrolled the streets of the downtown area again, I couldn't help but glance at that restaurant as I passed by. It looked like any other place, with its bright lights and lively music, but I knew that something dark had once happened there. I'm Will, and this is a story that happened to me a few years ago. It was a warm summer evening, and I was in the ninth grade. We lived in the suburbs, and there was not a lot to do for our age. None of us had our driver's license, so we were pretty much confined to our neighborhood. There was a small commercial area with a coffee shop, a grocery store, and a few other businesses, including a KFC. My friends and I had nothing to do, so we decided to hit up the KFC. We would sometimes go there and buy a single drink just to hang out somewhere. They had free refills so it could last forever. I know it's dumb, but we were bored. It was around 10pm when we got there, and the place was relatively empty. We ordered a drink and sat down at a table. There were four of us, me and three other guys. As we were sitting there talking, an older man approached our table. He looked to be in his late 40s. He wore dirty clothes and smelled strongly of alcohol. He looked relatively thin, but he had a large gut sticking out from his shirt. At first he seemed friendly. He asked us how our night was going, and if we were doing anything else after. We responded politely, but we were really hoping he would go away. Not that we were scared or anything, he was just interrupting our conversation. He was really telling his life story, and we were not interested. He told us that he used to be a boxer, and he bragged about his record. He also boasted about some other things that I can't remember. 
We were all too nervous to say anything to him. We just tried to ignore him and hoped he would leave. Eventually, the man did walk away. We breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that the ordeal was over. We knew that the place was closing soon, so we got up and left. My friends and I lived pretty close to each other, but my house was in the opposite direction. I said goodbye to my friends and started walking alone down the deserted street. It was a bit eerie, but I was more concerned about getting home than anything else. I was pretty tired, so I tried to walk fast. It was a little cold, and I was in shorts and a t-shirt. As I walked, I noticed the man from KFC was following me. I felt scared, and I quickened my pace. However, the man caught up and called out to me. Hey buddy, wait up. He shouted. I was pretty scared, but I didn't want to show it. I was concerned that if I ran, he would chase me. I turned around and forced a polite smile, but I didn't stop walking. By then the man started jogging up towards me. He started asking me some creepy personal questions. I was becoming increasingly uncomfortable, and I was fighting my urge to run. Eventually the man tried to reach over to me. I don't know if he was going to grab me or what, but I didn't want to wait to see. I took off running as fast as I could. I looked back, and he was chasing me. I ran for what felt like an eternity. My heart felt like it was going to explode. Eventually I lost him, and I slowed down to catch my breath. I looked around, trying to get my bearings, but I realized I had no idea where I was or how to get home. I knew I was close to my neighborhood but I was so scared that I ran into an area that I didn't know well. I was lost and alone, and I became disoriented. The fear started to set in. I didn't have a phone with me, and there was nobody around to ask for help. I started walking, hoping that I would stumble upon something familiar. As I walked, I turned around and saw that the man was still following me. I could see him behind me. I broke into a run again, hoping that I could get away. I don't know how long I ran for, but eventually I saw a familiar landmark. It was a radio tower with a blinking light that I knew was not far from my house. I followed it and eventually made it home. I told my parents as soon as I walked in the door. We called the police the next day, but nothing was done about it. I was really frustrated because I would see that guy around my town sometimes, and I know he was dangerous. This happened when I was 20 years old, and I'm in my 30s now. My first job was at a restaurant, and I started as a busboy. I did that for a year or two, and then I was promoted to server. The place was a steakhouse, and it was on the bottom floor of a hotel, so most of the customers were guests of the hotel, and they were from out of town. I had been a server at the restaurant for a few years when this took place. It was hard work, but I didn't mind it. One night I was closing up the restaurant with two of my colleagues, Brandon and Andrew. Brandon was the manager. He was in the office doing some paperwork and organizing the cash from the night. Andrew was a dishwasher, he was in charge of closing the kitchen, and I was responsible for cleaning the dining area. I was sweeping the floor and wiping down tables. Andrew was busy scrubbing the last of the pots and pans in the kitchen. As I worked my way towards the front of the restaurant, I heard a faint tapping on the door. I looked over, and there was a man standing there behind the glass. He was friendly looking with a mustache and a grey sweatshirt. I assumed he was a customer who had forgotten something, so I walked over to the door and opened it. But as soon as I did, the man burst into the restaurant aggressively. I thought that was rude, but I didn't realize what was happening. I tried to talk to the man and asked him how I could help. Then he turned around and pulled out a large knife. He told me to give him all the money that we had. I stood there with my hands up, almost crying. He told me again to get the money, but I could hardly move. Brandon walked in from the back of the restaurant and saw what was happening. He was carrying a stack of paperwork, and when he saw the man, he dropped it due to shock. Luckily. He was able to compose himself better than I could. He asked the man what he wanted, and he barked at him to get the money. He agreed. 
Then he went to the back, leaving me alone with the man again. Brandon came back and handed it to the man, hoping he would leave without causing any more trouble. I could see the fear in Brandon's eyes as he handed over the money, but he managed to remain reasonably calm. The man snatched the money from Brandon's hands and ran out of the restaurant, disappearing. We were all in shock, and it took us a few moments to gather our thoughts and realize what had just happened. I ran to the door and looked outside, but the man was nowhere to be seen. He was already gone. We called the police immediately, and they arrived quickly. They asked us a few questions about what had happened, and looked at the surveillance footage from the restaurant's cameras. Once they had that, the officers left, and we all went home for the night. It wasn't long before the police caught the man. He had been lurking in a small wooded area near the restaurant. He had a history of violent crimes, and was on probation at the time of the armed robbery. The police were able to track him down thanks to the surveillance footage from our restaurant. His face was in full view of two separate camera angles. After the incident, Brandon, Andrew, and I were all shaken up. It was our first and only robbery, and we were all grateful that nobody was hurt. We all took a few days off to recover and process what had happened. The restaurant remained closed for a few days while the police investigated the incident. We returned back to work, and eventually, things went back to normal. <laughs>